Are we on? We going? We're going. All right, people. Welcome to another episode of the D Gentleman Show. Uh, yes, that's Jay Rude. Yes, that's Alex. Monaco, money Monaco. Not after this weekend, though, right? One of one. I'll take it. I'm Brett Ernst, <laughs> and to my right is we have a special guest, amazing comedian, a self-declared expert in all things New York. That's right. Uh, my man Paul Verzi's in the house. Yeah, thank you for being. Oh, wow. Thank you for having me. Of course, man. Because uh, we, you know, what we were talking about this. We're so glad you're here because we were saying what this show needs more is more Italian, more yeah. Americans <laughs> from New York. That, more uh, argumentative <laughs> Italians who think they're always right from that, New York. We, yeah, that's what we. That's, that's what, what it we is. Were, so we, you know, we're glad you're here because this show la la uh, was lacking that. Congrats on. By the way, before we get started, congrats on all the success on your new Comedy Central special. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's like winning awards, right? It's like top five or something. It uh, it broke like all of their online views. So uh, that, that record, which was amazing when we heard that. So I'm excited about that for sure. Where can we find it? Uh, you could uh, find it on, it's streaming right now on ComedyCentral.com. So check it out. It's doing well. Thank What's God. What's the name of the special? Thank God. Uh, I'll say this. Paul Verzi, I'll say this. Uh, I thought you were going to tell us. It's not <laughs> uh, you, you're good. <laughs> uh, how'd you make out this weekend? Do you, do you, first of all, do you gamble? I love to gamble. You know, my wife, my wife kind of, tries to hold me back, you know, she said, she made me promise no more sports betting. So I literally, and I'm in Vegas now, so I have to call her today and go, look, I'm, I'm putting money on the, on the Lakers. Uh, you know, because I'm here. So, so but, she'd rather have you play roulette or something? Yeah, she just, because she knows that I start, you know, she's been down that road with me when I chased. Uh, you know, because guys like you set the line. I was going to tell <laughs> Guys like you set the line. I'm, I'm, I'm always, bad. No, I'm always the bad guy. He wanted a bag. That's, I saw you light up. Like, you got mad. That he, he beat the, his, you know, he's not gambling anymore. You're like, wait, you want to play roulette? Right. The, no, the funniest thing about what he does, I was at a Christmas party. I was at a holiday party, and somebody's going, oh, my God, the line is eight. They, it's taking money. It's stealing money. And they just lost. It's like, you, don't you understand? You're never, this guy knows better than you. Like, this guy knows. <laughs> how did why he's here. How did Vegas make out this weekend because uh, of the oh, refs? We did, we, did, uh, we did pretty well, you know? I mean, you know, the, the refs are part of the deal, right? I mean, they are what they are. Everyone knows that they're not perfect and that, not they, perfect. Could, that they, could, they could possibly influence the outcome of a game. Not Every perfect. Every single game. This guy knows something. Not, well, he's happy because you both, both your picks came in. You uh, were right. Well, yeah, I mean. For the first time in 20 weeks. I went against the grain hard. I mean, we had Lamar on here last week going, oh, home teams are 10-0 and 8-2 and, and, and blah, 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 blah. I had to, like, the, the Jedi mind trick. Yeah, this is the first time he's right in every episode, and now, now he's <laughs> mocking everybody. Yeah. He's got the Hall of Fame jacket. I'm still upset, man. That's a tough one, man. Th those refs are... <laughs> right. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I'm a, <laughs> it's like the Hall of Fame jacket. I was a unanimous so selection as well. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, you just, you just like, you just, yeah, that's like. Flipping it in. Right. You see, he, you know why? Because he hit some commissario tequila yeah, again before the show. All right, good it's, to go. It's, it's the there is something baby. to this with this kid. Yeah. If he drinks, he's good. <laughs> Doesn't drink, he's a stumbling, you, you, you stuttering prick. You. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> Where was the money, though? Real, real talk. Where was the money this weekend? Um, well, the money was it's on the over in the Saints jacket. game for sure. I mean, that was our biggest decision. Saints game, <laughs> under. Um, but then we had a couple of guys make some large bets. We had a guy bet half a million on uh, what? Patriots uh, on money line. Half a mil on the money line? Right. And then wow. he, but he also what bet he half a mil on the over. Uh, he won uh, 750 on the money line. So he actually he laid a million out. He pulled back uh, 1.25. So he did all right. <laughs> See? I lost 50 bucks. Yeah, my wife's upset if I put 125 on it. <laughs> this guy's got half a big one on the thing. <laughs> It's all relative. What a great who's he married to? Yeah, who's he married to, this guy? <laughs> Listen, I, sweetheart, I put some chump change on the game. <laughs> hey, just, just a little taste. It's a little something to wet my beak. Paul, will your, will your wife ever give you a tip or a little, uh, you know, you're going Lakers, maybe go, maybe not tonight. No, the only, They're on a back-to-back, -back, -back, you know? She, the only thing my wife ever tells me is just don't, never take the Knicks. <laughs> like, my wife doesn't even watch NBA, and she just goes, they don't play defense. Like, they just don't get back. She doesn't even know she, what defense is. She doesn't is. know, like, the game, and she goes, they don't get back on defense. Come on, Chris <laughs> Dale. That's how bad they've been. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> she didn't even know. Yeah, she just starts, she, she could coach. Um, so, Alex, yeah, how'd you do this weekend? You teased a lot, right? I teased a lot. Jay doesn't like my style. He, he said he went one and one, which the kid doesn't know. That's still burning money. Is it? 
Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. How is that burning money? Playing the VIG, you know. I mean, you know, if you 55 and 55. Yeah, so I, don't, I, I don't know exactly what you're betting. Maybe 110. You know, I mean, you're still losing. You're losing 10 bucks, buddy. Well, you know? I'm losing all the way across. What's the line on the Super Bowl, Jay? What do you guys have it at? Uh, we opened uh, the Super Bowl uh, Patriots minus one. I mean, there was a little little mixture out there when it first opened. Rams were won some places. It was picked some places. I felt if Patriots get in the Super Bowl, they've got to be a, a fairly decent. You know, favorite. You know, and I, I didn't like the Rams at all. I knew we were going to draw money, so we opened one. Immediately took like a hundred thousand dollar bet. Went to one and a half, and it's just been coming in steady for the you know the first three or four days. We're at two and a half now. Oh, we're set. Are we set at two and a half, or is that it's probably going to shift again? Right? Uh, yeah, we're gonna, you know we're not going to see the, the lion's share. Ninety percent of the money is going to show up between um, Friday morning and kickoff uh, next week. So you know we're going to see a ton more money come in on this. Well, I would imagine my decision to go to three is going to be, that, that's a big decision. Because once you're at three, there's no going back. Right. And, and I think the Rams money won't show until late. So I don't really want to go to three and then have a ton of Rams money come back and then have to maneuver around it a little Could bit. Could it go to four? No. No way, huh? When no you way. say it goes to three, when it goes to three, there's no going back. What, what do you mean by that? Well, you, you don't want to dance around three. I mean, three's one of the most common uh, right. uh, winning margins in the NFL. It's like 23.5%. But... So if you go to three, the only way you're going to be able to uh, fade the action is by moving the VIG, right? So uh, Got you, it. We'll go to, if we go to three, I'll probably go Patriots minus three, even money, and make you pay double VIG on the, on the Rams. But, you know, I don't – because if you start taking the Rams at plus three and you go back down to two and a half, now they're going to lay two and a half. So they're taking three, laying two and a half. It's not a great position to be in. Now, if you go to three, are you going to go to three and a half for the hook? No, we probably would just go to three. You, which, you keep it at that's three. Why, that's why – because that's too much of a move, I think, because we are going to see late Ram money. And I don't want it to be on three, because who the hell wants a push in the Super Bowl? Right, of course. Right, so a two and a half is like the number. And I have tools to, to fade the action if they are laying two and a half too much. Then I just juicy up the, the money line a little bit. I which, got you. And then I can fade it, and then I'm creating a little two-point middle for ourselves. It's amazing, the science behind this. It, well, so you got, you got a two-week line. You got the squares, the wise guys. The, you know, where, where do the professionals come in and when do they come in? And They've already come in. in. Yeah, I mean. They, they start up, but do they come in again at the end? They'll, they'll come in once uh, some, some public money starts to get put in the pipe and, you know, props start moving. There becomes some value because everyone starts betting the over. Everybody wants to see human Point. achievement, right? They want over in the game, they want to see points scored, they want to see guys score touchdowns. Bookmakers, we don't, you know, we like the under. We like, you know, when it's nice and quiet out here, that's, that's, my, that's my special time, right? I mean, that, one of my favorite things to do is go out after like a team that scores a touchdown when 90% of the public is on the other side, it's like go out and listen to the crickets. But, you know, I subject myself to the other. It's too. amazing it. the science behind this and I just pick a game like, yeah. Cowboys. Yeah, I, I got it. Cowboys. I got a good feeling. I'm gonna bet the done. Cowboys after I go to Chick Fil A. Okay. <laughs> you know what though, Jay? You know what though? Let's compare him. records. Let's compare records this season. Uh, it's all documented. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm one and one this weekend. <laughs> I'm 500. That's a good batting average. Yes, Joe DiMaggio. Uh, that this this whole weekend though, these refs, that was awful, man. What was the worst yeah. call? The. Uh, uh, Roughing the passer on the uh, swipe left as a a Alex would do. Thank you. On um, Brady or the non-pass interference on this. What was the worse? It's well, got to be the non. It's yeah. got to be the non-pass interference call because that takes a team out of the Super Bowl. I mean, the 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 New Orleans Saints, and I'm not one to complain about one play of a game changing a game because there's a lot of different plays, and it did go to overtime. Saints could have won in overtime. I get all that, but a blatant call like that. Taking your team. Could you imagine being a Saints fan? Two fouls. I'm a Giants fan. If that happened to me, I would, on that play. I yeah. would be, it would be like not a domestic dispute because I'm not like that, but things would break in my I would, things would, neighbors would, someone would call. I would freak out. Yeah. If the New York, <laughs> if that happened to the New York Giants, it would probably take me a good two weeks to get over it. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't. Could you imagine being a Saints fan? But imagine well, being a Chiefs fan second when, year. when, I don't even know if yeah. that was actually in, in uh, neutral zone. Off, yeah. yeah, neutral zone infraction. Yeah. But Brady throws an interception. Again, that, that lost the game. The game was over. But, right? Brett, that's more Patriots. And they kept the drive going with that BS uh, uh, personal foul on the uh, rough and the passer. I mean, what was that? Well, that was BS. But the, but the neutral zone pick, that's sick black magic Patriots luck that's been going on for forever. They got the no – you, you read it. They had no calls, right? You said no penalties? 
yeah, that we're, were accepted? We're going to our fact checker for that, but it, it's looking like that's Very case. few, if any. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they might have penalties that were declined. But back to Paul's point. But, yeah. Paul, it, first of all, I'm going to owe my roommate a utility bill in a few weeks from now. Thank you, referee. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> this changes NFL history. I wanted to see selfishly yeah. Breeze Brady for how many years? Now we're, we're probably not going to get it. And you do this to a small market team, you really look at it objectively. Well, we got yeah. no horse in well, the let's, race. Let's, <clears throat> let's ask this question, okay? Being the conspiracy theorist that I am, is, is the Los Angeles Rams being in the Super Bowl better for business, bigger market? Does the NFL want that? The refs, from what you know, they said that the refs were told, hey, a lot of bad flags were called this season. Don't do that in the, in the playoffs. Right. They looked at each other, no flag. Is it, do they want the Rams in the, do they want the Rams Absolutely. rather than the Saints? Absolutely, 200%. It's a bigger market. Uh, there's a lot of money going into, into the, and, and if you want to read a book, uh, it's called The Fix Is In. Did you read that? I have not. It sucks when you make a point and the guy who makes the lines is basically <laughs> nodding his head like these kids are morons. <laughs> no, we're not. As we're talking, the guy we're who not. runs this is going, this kid's a moron. No, we're That's not morons. Weird. Okay, the referees, do you know? And, I, and, I can understand your, your point of view, but I, I, I don't agree. I'll tell you, uh, Jay, because you wouldn't be in on it, okay? It's like, it, it's like... It's like, uh, it's like <laughs> yeah. you're just part of the, you're a pawn of the game, part of, man. A, a cog in the You're machine. just a cog in the machine, dude. Right. You can't read the book. Wake it up, man. Wake up, bro. No, seriously. Uh, there's uh, an NFL fan sued, uh, a Jets fan sued the NFL, right? And I guess the court ruled by reading a, sta uh, uh, I don't know. You guys got to read it. You Google it. Uh, Google Jets fan sues NFL. But basically, NFL, NHL, all the professional sports leagues abide by the same uh, by, bylaws as, the, uh, as professional wrestling. It's labeled as sports entertainment. And if they pay the referees, right. technically they could tell the referee, it's legal for them to tell the referees to influence a game. It wouldn't be illegal. It would be illegal to bribe them, but if they're paid employees, they can say, hey, look, go easy on this team. We want to see this team. And, and create these storylines. I don't think it's so far-fetched if one day it came out that, that, the, that the NFL, whose billion-dollar profit-sharing yeah. organization, was setting this up to be entertaining. And not only that, though, it was such a blatant call that when you look at the D-back of the Rams uh, walk away, he knew it. He was laughing yeah, he afterwards. he was surprised. Uh, here's the other thing. The big thing that they were going for was helmet-to-helmet. And this year, that was what they're stuff. It's, it's a helmet to helmet. He helicoptered the guy. He, so he not only is he there way before, a beat or two before the ball gets there. It should have been a personal foul. So either way, it's a 15. Either way, it's half the distance to the goal. No and matter how you. And he face guarded too. There were three penalties. Yeah, there's three penalties. And then the refs were like, put their head down, walking away. How can that be? I was just, how could it's that to your be? point, Paul. They want the league wants this matchup. Absolutely. Okay, so hot topic. Hot topic. Should. Should pass interference be a reviewable call? Uh, absolutely, uh, John. Absolutely, two hundred percent. It should be a reviewable call, and personal fouls should so, be a, yeah, a reviewable call. I agree. I mean, it, it's it's all or nothing at this point, right? I don't think you can have this hybrid model of, okay, this is reviewable and that isn't. I I think they have to come up with a system that won't delay the game anymore, but will allow for you put a guy in the booth. He's watching every single thing. If he doesn't like what he sees, he beeps the the judge. And then they do a quick review and says, hold on a second. They look at it. We're good. It was holding. It wasn't holding. Pick it up. You know, everything should be reviewed at this point. Because there's, there's no going back to the good old days where it's just, you know, strictly human, yeah. so human error, you know, and you live with it, right? So, yeah. So if but Sean the man doesn't want that, Jay. But if Sean Payton ha had the luxury of pulling a challenge flag right. and challenging the flag on the field, you would hope the refs got that but right. But see, here, here's the other thing, though, is that you can't challenge a non-call. So what you're saying is that the coach should be able to But Brett, how, come they, can, say, how hey. come they can throw a flag and then pick it up? Right. You got to have reciprocity. I think that goes to the same thing as you can't prove a negative type thing, right? That's what I'm saying. Like on that play, actually, there, uh, you'd have a, a ref in the booth watching that. And if there was no flag on the field, the ref in the booth could be like, uh, excuse me, boom, boom, buzz it in. And then they would say, oh, okay. They saw something that the, the guys on the field didn't see. Maybe the guy that was supposed to be watching that play was getting run into, was getting picked, was getting screened, something. You know, that could be the possibility that that doesn't get called. I just, I, again, this, go ahead, what were you going to say? No, I just said there's just, there's just so much money involved 
that you just can't get it wrong. I know some people, oh, human error. We, you know, as a kid, you never did that in the yard. It was like if it was, it's like, no, but this is 2019. The technology is there. There's people, you know, spending huge money to go to a game. You're spending huge money. You buy your kids the apparel. You get the apparel. You're all excited. You're tailgating to go there and watch that investment go to a bad call. See, but call. that's what the court ruled on, by the way. When, when the Patriots got caught cheating, the Jet fan wanted to sue for the price of the tickets for the past 10 years. So what, what the court actually <laughs> said, for real, yeah. said, all your, all your promise by this is to see a football game. So you saw one, they, they abided by the contract of the ticket. This, this but, is the best kept secret, Brett. If this is under WWE fan entertain, what yeah. the heck am I betting on games for then? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. If exactly. they wanted to influence it, they could legally. Absolutely. But they, they, they can't do, they they do, can't do it. Every year. They change the rules. It's adopted. You know, you, but, you, if, you, if you go like that to a quarterback, that, that's a But it's not, it's not, now. it's not but directed. But it's still all subjective. But I'm saying it's, it's not about the betting. The betting's, the, it's not, they're not, the NFL isn't changing anything for gambling. Correct. No, they're changing it not. to create parity. And so their profit right. sharing organization has people able to watch it. And I mean, at least that's what I think. Well, technically, yeah. isn't New Orleans a small market if you're really looking at they, the Well, the Rams, league. L.A. was the original market. That's why we have football on TV. They were the first. And, and you know, for years they've been trying to get sport, a sports franchise to stick there in the NFL. You don't think they would have won a celebrated uh, Breeze's accomplishments this year in the Super Bowl? Uh, I, I think I think they got to build that L.A. that L.A. market, man. I think it's big money. I really do. Because when you look at the profit sharing, okay, of, of the organizations, I think 66% of it, other than ticket sales and, and, and box, like box seats, that's the team gets to keep that. But majority of the profits of TV oh. revenue. So in those markets with like 2.5 million people, that's big money for TV revenue. Of course. And that's the profit sharing. Uh, it, that is a huge chunk of change for the NFL if they could get the Rams market back and running. So both games ended in overtime. But ever, first time. And, and both referees right. impacted both those Is games. Is it time to address that rule next hot topic? Okay, Alex? Yeah. All right, next hot topic. The NFL is the only major league to not have a time to overtime. Why, gentlemen? I, I completely think that they should. It makes sense. Basketball does it for five minutes. Why not? You can still have a coin toss, right? Have a coin toss. Somebody went, somebody, there's going to be a certain chunk of time, right? Whether it's 10 minutes, another quarter, 15 minutes, whatever, five minutes. Right. That team kicks off. You're going to get it. The, with that much time, somebody's going to have a chance to go again to have their possession. Why not? Every other sport does it, and it's worked in that sport. That's all hot and bothered over here. No, I, I, I say, why even do a coin toss? Just pick it up as a fifth quarter. Give them a five-minute break. Let them relax. And then why stop the momentum of the other team, Right. <laughs> So they score, they want to kick off, then let, let the other. And, and if the time runs out at, like, if, you, if it's third and eight, then just reverse the field and go the other way. Yeah, I like the college overtime. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that because. You know what, Jay? It doesn't matter with, about with, which, which, <laughs> what you like and what you don't like. If you've got. If you've got the Hall of Fame big got, shot. Yeah, I mean, if you've got 45 seconds, right, your strategy for those 45 seconds is much different if that's all you have than if you know, all right, well, I'm going to go down here for a little bit and then. Uh, it'll time will expire. Right. Will be tied. You shouldn't be and able to wait. I think there should you 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 will eliminate the urgency, which is what the best part of the end of the game is, right? I mean the the urgency for that. Team I don't to think do you something. eliminate the urgency. You're still strategizing uh, to, to run the clock out. I, th you, I think you, you they do it all the time. You would see Andy Reid's like just. Dinkin no, but that's what he's to his point. What he's saying is, if you got a two-minute drill or a one-minute drill, right. and you're going down, and you're you know you're at the fifty, and you're looking at the clock, and you're like, we'll just wait, and we're going to get it in overtime. The the whole point of it is, right? Your play, uh, your I get play what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. You're not you're not going down. No, yeah, I can see that. No, I see what you're saying. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, you, you, you're pretty much a two-minute warning. And speaking of unless that, you're going for the win. Speaking of overtime, right. how does how does Andy Reid not take a shot at the end zone on second down? With 11 seconds I, You left. know what? That I, is one I, I the, said the same another, thing. Another Andy Reid moment in the playoffs. Yeah, why wouldn't you go you for You control the whole destiny I, at that I was point. thinking about that, too, yeah. Really bad. Hindsight's 20 Did you, did, did you, uh, not, I mean, what did you think of that? you got to have someone, uh, an assistant coach going, we got 11 seconds left. Second down. Why are we throwing He should have played for the Bucs or field goal. Especially with having a player like Tyreek Hill. Or a tie, Hill. though. You could have won the game. you got somebody like Tyreek Hill, and you have an arm like that, and a kid that can roll out and throw a dart like that. Makes you got to, I, I like a shot at it, too. And, and worst case scenario, I mean, you know, you throw it where, the, where only the receiver can get it. Yeah, you toss it out of bounds. And if they drop it, it stops the clock. you got another six seconds. So what do you think the best 
over time set of rules because they tweaked it once it used to be field goal ends it now that field goal continues it first touchdown ends it I, well let, here's the thing though D let's be honest here okay brady ran down the throats of the chiefs at the end and everybody's going well wouldn't it be great to have showtime mahomes have a chance you know what the defense stunk he <laughs> ran it down their throat and they didn't go for field With goal. they got from the referees though they kept drives going I get it, but you know what? Make a stop. This kid Burkhead, whatever, whatever his, yeah, he's running yeah. down. I mean, his guy's looking like you know. But, Paul but Paul, the, 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 the thing <laughs> is, it is so hard. It is so hard to play defense nowadays. They're, they're literally the 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 art of defense is is out the window for teams. But just by the rules, what they could do, what they can't. I mean, apparently, unless you're the Rams, that you could just uh, uh, tomahawk and slam the receiver with no penalty. That is counterproductive, though, to being able to review pass interference. What do you mean? It's tough enough to play defense. Now everything you do is going to be on film, and they can. That's why probably why they don't review. But you know what, though, John? Um, I, I'm more with the reviewing the personal fouls. I mean, like what, what they did to uh, what's his name? Uh, it was Clay, Brady. Clay Matthews. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, to what? Uh, yeah. put, put, putting his weight on a quarterback. What does that even mean? That yeah. is actually interesting. Actually, the NFL shows you what they who they are. They pride themselves on helmet to helmet all year. Yeah. And then in the biggest moment. Turn a blind eye for rating. I'll find good. <laughs> oh. That's a great point, though. I mean, honestly. How many, like, helmet to helmets were, like, sometimes they don't even try to hit the helmet, right? right? They'll go down with the head, try to get his shoulder, but his helmet will, like, nick the guy's face mask. Flags all year. All year. Flags all year. Now, this, this it's was... It's fixed. It's all fixed. Question. Does that guy get a fine for the helmet to helmet? Well, that's what I was going to say. There's no I mean, way that's coming out. No. Did you see no. his interview, by the way? He's talking like he got away with highway robbery. Oh, no, he was <laughs> he laughing. Did. He was laughing. He goes, I can't. Did you see him walk away? It looked oh, yeah. like my son when he does something bad <laughs> and just tries to get out. He knew. He just walked away, and he was just looking around like, I can't believe. And then the whole place is booing. And then it was weird. Watch it again. The refs have this weird... The refs are doing this weird, and again, I am a conspiracy theorist, so take it with a grain of salt, but they had this, like, well, you know, next they play. Were like, they were like this? Yeah. They, it, was, it was very weird. Well, I mentioned it before. You're, <laughs> is that you're, what they were doing? From a yeah, like, they, like, they you're, talk you're, to somebody. You're in a ref in, a, in an arena. You want to, you've seen a basketball ref getting ready to call a charge. I brought it up before on the panel. They like to get the, 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 the applause after a home time. I got no oh, problem I think with a bad hold. Oh, go ahead, what? No, no, I was going to say, I was going to say, I got no problem with a bad holding call. Or a bad, you know, stuff like every play stuff that, because yeah. that's that's like to the ref's eye. I don't like. I think he hooked him too much. Fine, right. that's a bad flag. You know, offsides, encroachment, all that stuff. Fine, but when it comes to a personal foul, that can change the outcome of a game. Fifteen yard penalty or interference, it has to go to some sort of. Do review. you guys ever remember this bout of a call at this important of a stage um, in the playoffs? You know in what? Your life? I'm sure there have been. Oh, I yeah, don't. Yeah. I don't. This I mean, is not, this on. is I mean, rule. The, the Brady but, Tuck rule is but one. You gotta. I mean, that this was is awful. a helmet to hell. No, it's not even bigger, playing the ball. This is bigger the than the Brady one. This yeah. is the biggest. I agree with that. This is the biggest one ever because the ball is so far back. The guy helicopters them, and, and then it's just nothing. And then and it's to go, it's a last drive to go to the Super Bowl. And you Bowl. have five refs. Yes. Yeah, but you got five guys trying to watch 24 dudes in, like, literally I'm saying. an 8 to 12 second, or not even that, like an 8 to 10 second play. You're, you're, you know, well, Jay, when you, when you were playing I mean, with the Green Bay Packers in your Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, yo, but That's I'm saying is that the ball, let's just say there's five guys that are supposed to police everything. The ball goes here. You don't think two of the th five or one of the five sees what happened? They well, all, they're, they're, not, all they're, they're trained not to watch the ball. They're trained to watch their zone. Okay. So not every ref is watching the ball. How funny would it be if, like, one of them calls up and goes, you guys know we just ruined everything, right? Like, this is going to be a bad Seriously. Monday. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, what right. about the guy watching that zone? I'm sure there are two, at least two people that saw that and nobody chose to call. This is up there with the OJ case. That's all I got to say. <laughs> the glove didn't fit. Look, right. I, like I said, the right. NFL, right. Uh, they, when I talk to my friends about their big conspiracies, which, you know, you're one of them, but yeah. not, we don't talk about it this much. Right. Because I'm, I'm up there too. Yeah. Everybody thinks that Vegas has to, pl ha has to come into play or the mob or any of that. No. It's the, it's the profit-sharing organization and drawing eyes to these uh, million markets, the, the, these popular teams yes. that are always. Like so we, you, you got to remember, really quick, the Patriots have become uh, Mayweather. So in the beginning, it was a great story that everybody wanted to see the Pats win. You're following that storyline. Now they want to see them loot. People yeah. are dying. People hate the Patriots. Yep. But you made a point, and I agree with this as well. What's that? About 
you're never going to see this again. No, like this is something going on right now, which, you know, we had people over the house. My, my wife had some friends over, people that aren't avid sports fans going, oh, the Patriots, all I care about is them losing. Then last night at a comedy club, some older woman walks into the club and she just goes, Belichick, uh. And everybody <laughs> has that thing. And it's like, you know what? You're not going to see a coach quarterback dominate for a decade and a half like this. Nine Super Bowl appearances in 18 years, it's unheard of. Brady so you know alone. What? Yeah. yeah well. <laughs> I'm loving the eyebrows. Wow. Really how much, commitment. How much, really how much commitment. do you guys, how much you guys spend in tinfoil? What's that? What do you mean? Like you, your entire house must be like covered in tinfoil. Why? All these conspiracies. We're, we're so, so you know the <laughs> microwaves and stuff don't get in there, and, and like they know where you are and what you're talking about. No, yeah, no, no, it's uh. not. It's not that. But yeah, there's. They're on airplane. But, but that was his, and I agree with you. That this is this is gonna not happen again. Beat them. Beat them. You know, like my New York Football Giants did twice. But here's the thing. Beat them, and the way to beat them, is, and I love your analogy with Floyd Mayweather because to beat Floyd Mayweather, they said you could not make a, one mistake. He even said it. When he was training, he goes, if the guy makes one mistake, I'm going to beat him. I'm either going to knock him out or I'm going to win the round. Because of his mistake, it's going to make me win the fight. It's the same thing with the Patriots. Look how many penalties the Patriots have a game. They don't. Look at it. Look at a team that's yeah, a high offense. choose not to call them. Not always. No, not always, though. I mean, By the I way, when, when, you, when you saw that comeback against the Falcons, okay, that, that, that drive, yeah. That drive was kept alive on three pass interference calls. The first two were BS. And the last one was really a pass interference call. All right? But, and also, Edelman, that Edelman catch was, like, off the chest of a defensive back. Right? E even when he threw that interception at the end of the game, the refs bring it back. There's just something that happens with the and, – and, again, I'm – I don't hate the Patriots like, like John does. I do. I know you right. do. You can't stand So you don't subscribe to the theory of they create their own luck? No, not at all. I, th I think that, yeah. you know. Was, was it a fumble? Did it hit Edelman's hand when he... Uh, the, the that was weird. Oh, that was bananas. That was weird because no, it didn't, one angle... It didn't hit him. No, the one angle yeah. shows the thumb. That was like... Yeah. It was almost like magic. Like, yeah, it was like it's a Pruder film. Yeah, it's like one... The thumb hits it. And you could see the glove on the thumb move a little bit. And then the other one, it doesn't even look like it came near the thumb. So I was just like, I didn't get it. Again, who made the deal with the devil? Is, there, is it Belichick? Is it Brady? Because no team has this luck. You... We got to figure all this out because I don't have a Valentine's Day date because of these refs, and I got to get this figured out. I can't, I can't afford anything. Now. <laughs> just, what are you talking the, the kid just snapped. I love how his, like, his love life snapped. comes into. No, I'm out of I got no, all my money went to the Saints. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and I'm bothered by it. And we need to figure this out. The integrity, there needs to be checks and balances. Right, well, let's, can, Here's can the I, thing, there's no flag, and I got no date. Like, where, That's the problem. <laughs> can, can I address this for him, please? Please do. All right, uh, first off, Alex, you know, what you might want to do is cook for her then. Fi you, right, take a just walk. Just because you don't have nice money. walk, right. Yeah, you go, do something like, you know, like, like you can only make, do hard-shaped ravioli once a year. That's the reality. Make, make, make her a car out of macaroni shells or something like you did for your mom, a little pa plaster of Paris handprint. Something right. thoughtful. You don't have to buy something for a girl for Valentine's Day. Look, it was a bad joke out of turn. Speaking of being a I'm already 45 <laughs> seconds in it. I'm already sweating. So what we did was we took our boy Pete, all of his hair, all of his teeth, and uh, we brought him up to the foundation room here at Mandalay Bay. The uh, director of operations, is that her title? Right, Jules Gray. One of the, Jules, one, Jules Gray. One of the sweetest and most knowledgeable. She knows uh, the, the, all the art, all the history there. Uh, Jules was the operation manager. She took Pete around, and uh, <laughs> let's take a look at the yeah, look. At, at Alex's Girl Valentine. Clip. I'm at the foundation room atop Mandalay Bay. I'm here with Jules. She's the operation manager here at the foundation room. Jules, tell me a little bit about the history of foundation room. We have a lot of history here from all around the world, but one of my favorite pieces here in the dining room is in one of our private dining rooms. It's amazing. You can host up to eight to ten people in this room. And we have a table in there that is one of Louis XV's tables. It was in his home in Paris. How do you guys acquire such amazing furnishings for this place? Well, we have a curator that um, travels around the world and definitely picks up some amazing pieces for us. Oh, so you're, not, just, you're not going to like the swap meet on the weekend? <laughs> no, yeah. definitely not. I thought you guys were just good at picking garage sales. I'm like, what is happening here? This is amazing. Jules, I've been to Foundation Room a bunch. I don't think I've ever eaten in the dining room. Uh, tell me a little bit about the dining room. What are your, what are your sort of your, your favorite things? Our dining room is amazing. We have kind of a taste from around the world. A little bit of everything for everybody. One of my favorites, some Wagyu steak. 
So we also have a fantastic happy hour in our lounge that begins at 5 um, every night from 5 to 8. Uh, you can also have those yellow toe tacos in the lounge um, amongst other great small bites and apps. Right. So Jules, I understand Foundation Room started as a members only club. Can you still get a locker here? It did. Foundation Room Las Vegas opened in 1999. So we still offer our memberships and we have members from all eight Foundation Rooms join us nightly, which is fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. Well, here's the deal. I mean, we're in the Foundation Room and for some reason, I don't have a cocktail in my hand. Uh, can we go get a, a cocktail at one of the bars? I would love to take you to the Shangri-La bar and get a cocktail for Shangri -La, you. Shangri-La, please. Ladies first. Let's go. I'm not saying no to that. Shangri-La, let's go. So here we are in Shangri-La. Jade is going to make you an amazing cocktail. Jade, how are you? Good, how are you? What are we going to have? So we are going to have our take on a Negroni, but we're going to go ahead and do it with the tequila you brought in today. Okay, yeah, I brought in the uh, Comisario Blanco, a personal favorite of mine. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put an ounce of the Comisario, three quarters of the Amaro. All right, I have no idea what that is, but it sounds amazing. <laughs> a quarter of Sonar. I like that everything you're putting in is alcohol. There's no it's other It's all option. alcohol. Yeah, that's great. It's my kind of drink. We're gonna throw some Mole Bitters in there. Love bitters. Good for a sour stomach if you're having any issues. Okay. And one of the coolest things in this room, one of the most neat and significant things in this room, is actually the bar that we're at right now. Yeah. So this bar is the old um, marriage altar from St. Mary's Cathedral in Whoa. London. Whoa! <laughs> Jules, slow it down. What's going on? Did I commit to anything? We did. Oh, man. That's it right there. I knew it. You're That's in. how fast marriage works these days. <laughs> You're in. We're, no! we're in Vegas. Let's go. In this room, um, these are the old confession booths from St. Mary's Cathedral right behind you. Oh, my you gosh. There's a lot of worlds colliding in this room right now. There's a lot of secrets. I don't know whether I should have a drink or just apologize for my last week's behavior in Las Vegas. Oh, this looks good. Uh, well, can I try it? Go for it. Jade, thank you so much. Jules, cheers. cheers. That is awesome. That's amazing. Do we have a name for this cocktail? I was thinking we could go with something. The Commissario. The De Gentleman. De Gentleman. <laughs> I like it. That's great. Now I could uh, store this in the locker and ask for the uh, the gentleman at the foundation room. That's nice. So Jules, that was an amazing cocktail. Is there anything else you want to show me here at Foundation Room? There is actually. I'd love to take you and show you one of the most iconic places here in Las Vegas. Oh, let's go. Whoa! That's what I call a view. This is beautiful. It's amazing. You can see everything from up here. This is one of the most iconic selfie spots in Las Vegas. Oh, I'll tell you this. It's another great feature of Foundation Room. This priceless view, amazing cocktails, amazing people, amazing artwork, Foundation room, it's got it all. Got it. Hey, while we're up here, you mind, uh, can we take a selfie? Let's do this. Oh, I can't wait. Get in here, Jules. Thank you so much for having me You're up welcome. here. You're welcome. Thank you for coming back. Yeah, I'm not leaving, so <laughs> deal with it. Let's thank the beautiful Jules, by the way, for. Uh, yeah, Jules. She, 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 very photogenic, isn't she? Glowing and in Pete with his teeth. There was a lot of hair in that, in that segment. A lot yes, of, a lot beautiful of hair. hair. Beautiful hair in that segment. Um, all right. Uh, is Speaking time for Alex? Myself. Yeah, I was going to say. Is yeah. that Alex, don't you have to do a shot now? It's about that time. It's about that time, Alex. Uh, for, uh, this is for my bad out of turn joke. Yeah. You, we, that's, we, that's have a, we have a happy drinking Valentine's game. Day. We have, yeah. <laughs> that was phenomenal. Rude coming in. That's, Howie Long over That's here. why he's in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> oh, How is that? Smooth? Come on. Ah, delectable. <laughs> delectable. Delectable. Is that a word? I'm not well read, but I do know that word. All right, I'm Googling that word right now. Uh, Paul, I'm going to have, I'm going to look if delectable is a word. Why don't okay. you bring us into the next segment? Because you're a big Yankee fan. Yeah, uh, my like pleasure. John and myself. So I, here I wrote this right, it's right here. This okay. Mariona Riviera. But I could do it my way? Is yeah, that how we do it? Do it, do it I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. Don't worry about it. Mariano Riviera, which he called, <laughs> he actually called him Riviera, which is the most disrespectful. <laughs> he anonymously made it. 
Uh, Mariana Rivera, from my beloved New York Yankees, made history by becoming the first unanimous choice for induction of the Baseball Hall of Fame this week, along with Roy Halladay, rest his soul, Edgar Martinez, and another Yankee great, Mike Messina. Uh, we're all inducted. Uh, no Bonds, no Clemens. Are we seeing blowback from the PED era, and should these players be allowed to get into the Hall of Fame? What do you say, fellas? All right. That was good. That was good. I would have went, I would have did it like this, though. I would have said, Mariana Rivieras, uh, he made history. <laughs> by being the first anonymous. By, by the first anonymous pitcher. <laughs> but no Bonds or Clemens. No, uh, do you really, the, the question I think is a great question. It's is, hard to put them, it, here's the thing, right? You go to, you go to a, I go to Yankee Stadium with my son, right? My son's asking questions about stats. You want to find out. When I was a little kid, the Yankees sucked, so it was Don Mattingly. So I wanted to know everything about Mattingly. What happens with this cheating was it was like, this guy's bulking up like the Hulk. He's hitting balls that nobody was hitting, you know, that far. What do you say? How do you say this guy, Jeter, did it right, only hit whatever, 20-something was what is most? And then you got this guy hitting 70. I don't know. I say, I say it's hard. As a writer, I would be, it would be hard for me to put them in because of the cheating, as opposed to somebody like Mike Messina, who got 270 wins pitching against those guys. Well, I agree. I, I tell your, I, you, you tell your son, chicks dig the long ball. Who cares? Juice it up. I want to see a game where, I mean, if, if it helps them play better, But they all it? should be that. Put, put them in. Yeah, that's, but that's then fine. they all should but be. But now you're yeah, risking the health saying, of all the players. Huh? You're risking the health of all the players because a couple of guys, you know, are che it's cheating. And, and by the way, it makes what Jeter and A Rod and, and those guys even you more put impressive. Them in. You know what's wild though is look. I look. Oh yeah, not A Rod. Uh, <laughs> we're comedians, right? Tony we're, Gwynn. Yeah. Right, we're stand-up comedians. Right, look. I mean, I take that back. He, That's PED right Thank there, you, right? I mean, we got a PED controversy <laughs> right here, right? You just said he sucks unless he's got a little commissario in him, well, here, right? Here, here, so. Yeah. Here's the thing, a stand-up comedian. If he goes right? in the Hall of Fame of comedy, so now, because how about of, this then, Jay? Now, now he has to drink, so now to compete with him, we have to drink. No, not if you're good enough. He's not necessarily good enough, so he has to drink. It's that's still cheating. Jay is pro. <laughs> I thought I could do a type. I'm, I'm not pro. Oh, really hold on, well. a I'm not pro juice. I, I'm, I'm pro. Put him in the Hall of Fame because you let him on the field. They did what they did. Well, get back to this Alex analogy. He sucks as a comic, okay? <laughs> but when he drinks, he's somewhat okay. His jokes are stupid and they're forced. So now you're telling me that now me and Paul, being these exceptional comedians that we are, right. if we drink, but that's going to make us better because you, you allow can't him tell on, a joke if you his allow life him depends. on the stage. So if you allow him on the stage, he's not allowed on any do. stage. It's, he's that awful. I'm sorry, Alex. When it comes, <laughs> when it all because of Valentine's Day. <laughs> when it when it comes to Hall of Fame, right? So let's say Hall of Fame stand-up comedians. Let's just say. You got Richard Pryor, you got George Carlin, you got some people, you know, Eddie Murphy, Rodney Dangerfield. All Daniel, PED right. users. Now, if me, and if me and Brett wanted to get to Pryor level, right, and they were like, hey, man, there's a pillar of drink you could take, and your sets are going to get there. If I, I'm not on that level. It's not. So if somebody goes from hitting 50 home runs to now 73 home runs and bulks up, those numbers are, are on his lifetime stats, but it's not real. I think it's disrespectful to Roger Maris. I think it's disrespectful yeah. to Hank Aaron. I think it's disrespectful for all these athletes that came before them and did it the right way, and now they're breaking all of these records. How, how do you know? They just maybe didn't get caught. Uh, that's, trust the whole, me. That's, that's the whole thing. I mean, Babe there's... Ruth was not on steroids. If anything, he was on, uh, he was well, on whiskey. Well, and well, to your point, it's interesting because you guys are, you're right. The integrity of the game is hurt if you let these guys in. I but mean, what, 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 I was 8, 9, 10 during McGuire versus Sosa. Bonds is 73. Baseball was my favorite sport. Right. When you're a kid and you're watching that, chicks dig the long ball, kids get, dig the long ball. Come, sorry, I was kicking it. Sosa <laughs> anyway, Sosa sorry. 8% of the votes. Yeah. Sosa got 8%. But I think you either, you either I, have to I don't put them in a different category. Be. Or, 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 or asterisk, asterisk. Yeah, you asterisk them or you, you, end, you end it. Raphael Palmero, no business. I mean, I... I with Jay. Well, no, I say, you, I'm with you, Jay you if they let all him, do it. You let them play, you got to put them in. Sosa, if Pete Rose Sosa, isn't in the Hall of Sosa Fame, never got none of those guys busted. should be in the Hall of Fame. You know what I mean? So Sosa I never got busted. Huh? Sosa never got busted. That Sosa should be in the Hall of Fame. Okay. But everyone seems to think that he should have been busted. Clemens yes. didn't either. Right. I mean, so I'm saying these guys, 
there's plenty of guys out there that didn't get busted. Only, you know, a few. But I think. Bob's I, never tested. Right. Right, but I think when those guys were talking in front of Congress, when they were talking in front of Congress and the questions came in, Sammy Sosa all of a sudden couldn't speak English, and, <laughs> and, and Roger Clemens started saying things like, well, he may misremember, and they were talking like they were, they, you know, they, the, they, were, they were talking as if a lawyer sat them down before they went down and go, look, this is what you're going to say, and everybody knows. Now they were talking as if they brought their brother in from Sicily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it got. Uh, uh, I have my own family. I don't. Uh, PEDs, I don't know what that is. I, uh, Michael Corley on this? Uh, I says, yeah, sure, uh, why not? I'll, I'll do the pets. I'm, I'm drunk. I, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I got drunk. Maybe, maybe if they had Bill Belichick as their coach, they'd be better. <laughs> No, uh, again, your coaches. you know what, though? The, that is a valid point, and, and I do want to – they were never caught. They were never caught, right? They were but never it's caught. It's difficult. Like, to your point, Paul, you got a kid, he's asking questions. All of a sudden, this guy's in the hall. He clearly juiced. He's in the Conseco book. He was yada, never – they were never technically caught, but they, it's known. And, and, and when they testified or whatever, it was known that they were lying. And I think that that's the thing, you know? When I, I think people know that – you know, and look at, look at their bodies, man. Look at the body. The body transforms the same way. You know, it transforms the same way when you look at Sosa and then you look at Bonds' his head. A human head and neck shouldn't grow oh. in, a, in a year. Um, when you're a grown well, man. Giambi <laughs> admitted to it, didn't he? went up like four hat sizes. Did, did Giambi? To Bruce Bochy. No, your head does grow as you get older, by the way. Everything. No, your head does, too. Because I, I, I saw a picture of myself, and I'm like, how big is my head? Like, my head grew. I look like a, a, a mask out of my old self. <laughs> It All I know is Mariano so Riviera is the greatest pitcher. <laughs> uh, anonymously, number one, the best. No, um, but Giambi admitted to it, right? Didn't he? Giambi admitted to it, and it went away quick. When Pettit said he took uh, yeah. HGH, it went away quick. All the guys that kind of go, yeah, you know, I'm trying to keep up with the Joneses. I'm sorry I made a mistake. It went Pettit away. I'm trying to front keep front up with the Bonses. He said I wanted to recover I, I, quicker I, from my shoulder injury. Yeah, right. and, you know, he's a, a God-fearing guy. He was like, yeah. I'm going to do it. The adamant deniers, Rafael Palmero pointing, C right. Clemens just lying, using words that he can't. Sammy Sosa not speaking English anymore. All these guys. It's what like, about Mark McGuire? Was he on that stuff too? He, yeah, he goes. I don't want to talk about. Yeah, he goes. I don't want to talk about. What did he say when they asked him? McGuire, I don't want to talk about the Trump past. Yeah, Let's McGuire. talk about the future. <laughs> McGuire ended up. What are we? What are we looking in rearview mirror? Could you imagine for? if your wife like caught you cheating and you're like, did you cheat? We're not talking about the past. <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about the future. Let's look to what we got to look forward to together. So now, this brings us to the end of our show. By the way, I just want to say this for the record. One of the most fun times I've ever had on a show, on a panel show ever. It's great, Let's right? give it up for Paul. It's so fun. Hey, can, we, can we at least say that Alex made this show? Uh, yeah, really because did. everybody's concerned about his Valentine. Every, everything. Yeah. I mean, his, his segues are sick. He's a real professional. His hair. His hair is amazing. He looks like he's going to play stickball. Yeah, What's it's like, sports? yeah, what, yeah, what is this? I was coached to dress young, John. Uh, you look like a Jedi. <laughs> All right? In training. Yeah. yeah what shoes are you wearing today? I'm actually wearing the shot, John's, Jim's shine shoes. Wow. Okay. Right. Right. We're good. Right. It's good. Right. It really matches the hoodie. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a question. If Bill Belichick wins this Super Bowl, is he considered the greatest coach in NFL history? John? I, oh. I'm sorry, I was, I was not paying attention. I'm saying if Bill Belichick wins this Super Bowl, is he considered the greatest coach in NFL history over Lombardi? If that is who you're great. Who's your Mount Rushmore of coaches? That's a good question. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Idea. That's a good question. Bill Belichick is already the greatest coach in NFL history. Right. I think uh, he's clearly, the, the, you know, what he's done, how he's adapted and adjusted to the times with the free agency. It's amazing. And, and wins with, with white midgets playing <laughs> wide receiver. That's what he's done. He's been winning with white midgets. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Bill Belichick, you put him at, as number one or number two greatest coach. I got Belichick one. I got Lombardi two. I got, you got to put Chuck Noll in there. You got to go Bill Walsh. And then it's a tough one, but I squeeze Rich Kotite last. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, <laughs> no, I, uh, I <laughs> imagine that. I got, I got, <laughs> yeah, you, you go serious. You go four serious and I'd be like, I'll tell you I what. I got Chad Gailey, <laughs> Richie Kotite. I got Charlie Weiss up there, eight, <laughs> top eight. <laughs> All right, well, who do you got, uh, you, I, I'm going to trust your opinion more than Alex. Exact same list. And I, we're talking four, right? Isn't Martin Rushmore No, you can four? do five. We'll do five. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm Belichick. Um, you know, he's going to have six wins. 
in the in the Super Bowl mm -hmm. after this this next week. Is that a tell? Uh, that a tell? Lombardi, obviously pre Super Bowl era, but un unbelievable what he did. Chuck Knoll, I mean, again, Chuck Knoll was kind of like the Belichick of his era because he took guys that weren't superstars and made them made them household names. Bill Walsh, obviously, he had the glamour kind of team, and then Don Shula. Don Shula didn't get it done in the big big time games, but I mean, as far as winning games, he won a lot of regular season games. I'm going to go with Lombardi number one, Belichick two, Landry three, Shula four, Chuck Noll five. And You're segueing me great to the Italian side of the panel. I want to ask, of this list, Lombardi. is Lombardi the best leader of men on this on this Mount Rushmore? Well, yeah, but you you see. Absolutely. And, and his greatest Lombardi and Belichick probably are great leaders, but they did it very, very differently. Well, you, you also have to look at the quality of man that was playing in the NFL back then. They were men back then. The, the, what we have now, and, and it's no disrespect because we, we still refer to them as kids, right? It's a yeah. 27-year-old kid. Yeah. These were guys that literally were storming the beach at Normandy and then came to play football. Right. Well, so, and, and you know, football was over. They went and pumped gas. They were absolutely. mechanics. They, they were mechanics. They had all kinds of they they had had regular families. jobs. They were bagging groceries. Ba factories, you know. So th these were real men that, that Lombardi was coaching. Um, but they were more disciplined. They weren't like the, the, the kids you see now. Like, yeah. you know, the... They, they weren't overpaid. They weren't. Um, they were about production. They not, weren't not like, about well, who are we show. talking about? The quarterback with his own chef? We're Cousins. About, Cousins. Yeah, like Kirk, you know, these quarterbacks. They, these were guys that were like, look, I'm going to get the job done. You know, like even right. Roger Staubach was a war hero. Brady has his own chef. But that's a good question that Alex faced because it's like leaders of men. Like every time Belichick talks, it sounds like he's doing like a seminar on accounting. You're not in Seriously. it. Right. You know, he's mumbles, he's talk, he's quick. He's just got that, as a matter of fact, do your job or we're going to ship you out and get somebody to do your job. But when Lombardi talked, you're like, dude, I'll storm the beach for that guy. <laughs> Like, I'll, I'll run through a wall for that guy because he has that motivational, we're going to win, and, you know, but I, and he's Italian, which makes him a little better for, than anything. And he's from Jersey. But, like, you know, like, when he's like, what the hell's going on out here? You know? <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> Let's go. But yeah. we don't know what Belichick does behind closed doors with his team because he won't show it. That, that's true. Um, but the, another argument for Shula is he coached two teams. He, you know, he's a coach of the Colts, and then he took the Dolphins, you know, that undefeated season. Which, that was, I, I researched this. I think the Dolphins only played two teams in the regular season with over a 500 record. Mm. But the playoffs back then, they didn't have home field advantage. I think they beat Oakland in Oakland or the Steelers in Steelers to get to the Super Bowl. Um, Shula's got 347 overall wins. But he, he's the winningest coach, right? None of you guys have him. But I like your point. I have him. I have him in the end. We both have him. Yeah. Shula. We both have Shula in the, in the top. Yeah, but technically Rushmore's four. You got him fifth. What are you? What are you doing? No, I have you haven't even asked four. me my. Four. He's on my list. I have Null at five, and here's why I have Null at five, because he didn't. What defense and offense did he innovate? Was I mean he, he had one of the greatest dynasties in NFL history, which also makes me wonder, you know, why nobody ever brings up Terry Bradshaw when you're talking about great quarterbacks. Um, Shouldn't Bill Walsh be over Shula? I don't think so. No. Bill Walsh, I mean, again, created the West Coast Yeah, I've got offense. Walsh for Created the West Coast I would probably put, I would probably put Walsh over Null. Walsh's coaching tree is better than anybody in the history of the NFL. Oh, look at Tom Landry's coaching tree, my man. I'm not denouncing Landry. Mm -hmm. I'm just pro Anybody Walsh. else have Walsh. Gene Stallings on their coaching tree? Didn't think so. Hey, Alex, I think we should just. Uh, what's your and technically I'm going Lombardi in order. Is on, hold on. Technically, yeah. Lombardi's on Landry's Belichick coaching tree. Yeah. No, but it's not successful. I just, I just threw not that out of my, I pulled that out of my butt. Who? Nick Saban? No, he's not successful in the NFL. Nope. No. no. Belichick's coaching tree is you. Neither is Charlie Weiss, neither is Romeo Cornell, neither is Josh McDaniel. <laughs> you love this. Neither is Eric Mangini. Loves neither. it. I'm just, I'm just stating facts. Those are just facts. They were That's all so coaches for Belichick that did not Dude, I'm curious. What Shula's coach? Which tree? may make Bill Parcells. Somewhere in between That's, five you to know ten. What? Right. Somewhere in between five to ten. You, you guys know oh, Nick Saban know. dated my aunt for years? <laughs> yeah, we knew that. No, we knew just, that. I'm kidding. It was on Google. Alex, what's your Mount Rushmore? Wait, I'm going, I'm going in order of, of, of wins. I'm assuming Belichick gets a sixth, and then I would go Lombardi US five, and then okay. I would go with, I'm going to go Chuck Knoll, four, and then I'm going to go Walsh. How, how are you guys looking, I'm uh, yelling again. Tom Landry went to five Super Bowls in the 70s. Dude, you're acting like you just insulted he went, a family member. Know, right? He went to 20 consecutive, <laughs> had 20 consecutive playoff seasons, 20. If we're, talk, if we're talking about best-dressed coach on the sidelines, you obviously got to make him number one. Right. 
So you got 15 minutes on why everybody's trying to make the Patriots go to the Super Bowl, and then you're telling me that Belichick is great because of it. What do you mean? Why do you keep saying that's a contradiction? It's not a contradiction. Belichick is able to coach and succeed in an era that we all agree is because not the, the NFL best. wants him to. You're saying the fix is in for his team to win, and then you're giving him credit for his team winning. You hate this man. I hate him. But why can't you at least acknowledge he? He's the consistent he's factor in, in, in these nine he's Super Bowls. I'm not denying that. I want to hear from the guys that have lived more life than me. Of these men on Mount Rushmore, who's the best leader of a locker room? You got to go Lombardi. Landry is not in that. L Landry is not a rah rah. He's a lot like Belichick. A again, I don't know how Belichick is behind closed doors. Right. But he's very, he was very business oriented. I would have to say Tom Landry, I mean, uh, Vince Lombardi was, was number one. Paul, you it know? sounds like you're the same. Well, look, yeah. I, I go. I, best leader of men. I would say best leader of men on the yeah. list from what I've seen, videos and things like that, would be Lombardi over them. But I think X's and O's and winning is, is Belichick. I think he just has a formula and knows how to do it. Jay? I, I, think, I think the question you're asking is if you were building a team, who would you pick as your coach? And I'm going to go way off of center here, and I would pick Walsh. To, wow. be, to be my, I think he, he, I think he's a good leader. I think he ha held people accountable, and he was innovative and saw ta new talent when he saw it. That's a great one. I, I wait, wait, do we? I, want, I, I got research now. It's great. You should do this during the week. Uh, <laughs> well, we didn't know we were going here. <laughs> All right, Paul. Br oh, look at that. Are we picking the. Super we just wrap it up. He's got to hey, go get some Valentine cards. Paul, he's got to go make Paul's some macaroni cards. Okay. I'm we need Paul Super Bowl. Pick. Wait, Don Shula is in Paul Brown's coaching tree. Paul Brown's coaching. What about Paul Brown? He's on this list. He's got Weeb Eubank, Lou Saban. He's got um, Marty Schottenheimer, Rich Kotite. <laughs> That's it off. Don Shula. Wow, this is strong. We, we, you know what? We didn't throw. What, what about Paul Brown? And Bill Walsh yeah. indirectly. We got a hard out. I got to go. All right, guys. Well, all right. I'll wrap this up. So, uh, Super Bowl weekend's next weekend. Uh, Paul, who do you got? We, we got to get your picks. We'll give our picks later. I also want to ask you about the prop bets quickly. Sure. I think that's interesting. Uh, being in Vegas here with you guys, especially Jay, who does the lines, it's cool for me to do this. Um, I honestly think there is absolutely no chance that the Patriots lose this game. I think they're going to control the clock. I think they're going to run the ball with Sony Michelle just like they did against the Chargers. Um, and the Chiefs, they're going to control the clock. They're going to dink and dunk, and they're going to win. Uh, they're going to win the game. I think they're going to actually win the game handily. I take, I take the Patriots all day. And your Pro Bowl pick, go. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's right. Sony. I could. No, I, one thing I guarantee about the Pro Bowl is that I'm definitely not watching. <laughs> so, all right, that's it. We'll wrap it up, guys. Um, Paul, thanks again for coming. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Paul. Uh, definitely have you back. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of fun. I appreciate absolutely. it. Yeah. You're good, you. Yeah, pl plug your special. Yeah, my special right now, uh, streaming ComedyCentral.com. You could also go to my website. PaulVerzi.com has my uh, 2019 tour dates. I'll be all over America uh, this year touring, working the new hour, so check it out. Is this your pen? <laughs> no, that's Mariana Riviera's pen. <laughs> um, all right, so let's wrap this up, guys. This was another extraordinary episode. Oh, wait, what was the word that you said? Delectable. 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 Which is? It's not real. Seriously? No, it's not delectable. It no. makes no sense. <laughs> what do you mean? Look it up. Uh, this is Brett Ernst, uh, once again for uh, Jay Rude. Hall of Famer. Uh, Hall of Famer, Jay Rude. Uh, Lamar actually gave his induction speech. <laughs> right. Delectable. What's it say? Delicious. <laughs> Mouth-watering. Appetizing. Food. Flavorsome. <laughs> or drink. Delicious. Flavorsome. <laughs> Adjective. I, I would have never guessed flavorsome is a word. Sure, I haven't read a book since Roald Dahl's Matilda, but I know what the left <laughs> 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 yeah, Make it sound, please, for the love of God. All right, that's our show, guys. Tune in next week for another episode of the D Gentleman Show. Don't forget to add us on all social media. Go to the DGshow.com. That's D as in degenerate, G as in gentleman show.com. And make sure you call your moms. God bless. Salud, chintan. <laughs> <laughs>